Hi, it's time to tear down this new Rigol HCO 4000 series scope. I'll leave my uh, first impressions and noise measurements uh, video linked in up here. If you haven't seen it, it's got a new Rigol ASIC in it, and I believe it also has a new Rigol front end. And of course, it is a 12-bit jobby. So uh, this same, I think the same front end chipset in this is going to be used in the new HCO 1000 series, which is on the way. Anyway, let's take it apart, shall we? Not a fan of the feet, really. Oh, you betcha. Beauty. Oh, look at that. Oh, geez, that was a bit horrific. Got medieval. And it uses kind of like the de facto standard for uh, screw arrangement here, just to hold on the back case. And by the way, on my first impressions one, I totally missed the fact that this has a battery pack slider on there. Hence all this wanky shape in here is designed, and like clips up in here, designed to have a um, the battery pack slide in there, but I, I don't know if that option is available yet, but it's there. It's obviously, so obviously there'll be a back piece to be in there. Anyway, this will lift off and we've got the metal work. Oh, and that's, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's actually screwed into the back of the metal work there. Got to uh, a couple of RFI uh, tabs there and you can see it's probably going to be one big single board construction oh no actually i don't know anyway we'll find out is it one big single board oh look at this dual fan jobby dual exhaust on this bad boy no wonder it's loud jeez so anyway airflow wise it's all coming in this side i like how it uh, goes down onto the board as well you can see the heat sink in here is uh, angled in the right direction oh that 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 heat sink extends all the way down into there when we get that off you'll see it but anyway the air comes in here and they've got the fins in the right direction for the airflow and also the power supply inside there so the power supply is in the upper half here and then that all comes out the other side but yeah as i said in the uh in first impressions it is rather annoyingly loud and whiny and as is common we have to get the nuts off here there's no uh, washer no star washer under there before we can lift off the entire thing there we go although yep yep i have to disconnect a few things i'll get back to you and we're in there you go and wow look at the heatsink on the front end here and also would this be the uh, adc's as well so um the, yeah the new front end the 12-bit front end asic is chewing some power here that is like the heftiest heat sink in this thing um and usually when you got four channels like this there'll be four asics uh here for the front end and then probably two um adcs in here and then the uh, acquisition um asic and then the w whatever processor they're using to uh run the uh, b uh android operating system on this thing anyway that is very impressive and nice big single board construction and I am liking the look of the mains assembly down in here the uh, earth point there is very nice look at that and they've got all uh, crimps as well it's neat and tidy though it should be easy enough to upgrade the uh, fans in there for quieter ones so yeah check out the just multi-stranded that is just one big crimp terminal in there they've got the multi strands coming out here because I guess they wanted to like reuse the connector over here and obviously this is the uh, battery contact board and we can actually get that out there you can see they've got a nice little uh, plastic interface there with uh, pla uh, metal threaded insert so that's really nice so there there you go that is just um it's basically just some uh, mosfet switch in there for your battery so it chooses either the battery uh, interface um or it just comes from the uh, power supply and that's it. Took me a few seconds to figure out what that board down there was, but it actually tells us uh, AC triggering board. So they've got an opto coupler there, and so it just takes the mains output, uh, the mains input here, um, and just gives us an opto coupler output, which then goes over, this uh, cable goes over to the main board. So yeah, that's just for our line triggering. So they got into a lot of trouble there. And we'll go through the board in some detail, but uh, this is the LCD connection, so we can take that off and uh, then we can see it. But I'm going to just going to now remove all the heat sinks so that we can uh, take some high-res photos and uh, go into it. And if you don't know, I always have high-res photos available on my EV Blog Flickr account um, linked over on evblog.com. Well, I found an RTX 7 under there, and this one over here looks interesting. We'll take a look at that. Now, let's see what's under the front end. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. Oh, isn't that nice die-cast case? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Um, uh, they've used uh, sill pads there. And let's have a look. There's our four front ends. Jeez, there's not much in it. Remember, this is an 800 meg bandwidth. 
software upgradable front end. So this is 800 meg. So this is all their custom. I do believe they've rolled their own custom front end, but I'll take some high res photos and we'll go in there and check it out. But there's not much. They've got two relays. Uh, what brand are they? Not sure from this uh, point. And up here, We've just got, uh, yeah, they heat synced all three of those chips. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm pretty impressed. Everything in here is metal threaded inserts for all of the, uh, like holding down the main metal chassis here. And you normally get self tappers for that kind of stuff. But anyway, that just easily popped out. And then we can see the front panel board here for the uh, smart probe um, interface thing. So that'd be going off on its own ribbon cable, I would uh, be assuming. And then we have our optical encoders because one of their marketing claims is that uh, these are not uh, wiper type uh, ones that wear out. These are optical or photo uh, encoders. You know, they've got a lead and a photo transistor in there that, you know, detects the motion in either direction. So there's no contacts to wear out inside these things. I'm not seeing a brand on it though, but um, yeah, this is one of their uh, one of their brags. And it has been a, a sticking point um, for several scope brands um, over the years. And did Rigol actually cop some flack over the years for it? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think a few of the uh, scope manufacturers Manufacturers have on the EV blog forum and other places um, for you know their their pots wear out. You just use them so many times and but these are optical. So there's the interface and interestingly they do have a large cutout in here. That would be for the mixed uh, signal connector, which is not there. It's not even populated on the board, so don't get your hopes up. Um, no, this is not a mixed signal scope. Doesn't have an arbitrary waveform gen, but interestingly, they do have uh, cutouts there for two extra B and Cs. That would be um, you know your ARB gen output and whatnot. So um, interestingly, what I thought was um, it might have been the LCD connector is not. You can see it actually goes to the front panel board here. So they've got a ribbon and this cable actually going through uh, presumably for all of the uh, contacts here. Um, th that could be individual power going over to power uh, the active probes. And that power hypothesis makes sense because it goes over to here like this and there's um, like some switch mode uh, chips in there. So uh, yeah, looks like that's active uh, probe power. And the back of the interface board there, check that out. They've got uh, poly switch protection on all of the, um, like there's like four for each one. That is a lot. Um, I guess they expect a lot of goose, you know. Idiot engineers short out active probes all the time. It's interesting how they've gone to the effort to um, like emboss these out from the other side. I guess that's to uh, get a little bit more height for the connectors underneath. Let's go through the main PCB here and I am capturing this in 4K so you will be able to see all the detail but as I said high-res photos are available on evlog.com if you want to have a squiz. Now this is the main PCB here and if we compare it with the uh, Rigol 5000 which was quite a few years ago but that was their new uh, Phoenix chipset I think it was at the time and they and they had like an eagle on there. Um, this one has like a I don't know, it's some sort of flying bird, almost looks like a toucan or something. Um, but this is supposed to be the Centaur chipset, so I don't know. Um, anyway, this is the original uh, Rigol uh, 5000. It was very uh, simplistic here, and uh, I don't believe I ever took these off because these were uh, adhesive glue. So yeah, we couldn't actually see what was under these, even the front end. Uh, I did take the, the, the cans off. Anyway, I was able to get the heat sinks off these because these weren't uh, adhesive. So we've got a Xilinx Artex 7 here. Um, so it's the main bad boy. So all their new Ultra Vision 3 stuff is inside the Artex 7. And that's the main memory there. There is no extra memory on the bottom. I might show you the bottom of the board, but there's basically nothing um, of note on there at all. Um, so yeah, the, that Artex 7 is not cheap. And if I'm right, DigiKey puts that at about 205 US dollars, uh, 40 of quantity. So we'll have a look at the uh, main processor over here in a minute. But anyway, we have our bird here. Um, somebody had fun on the PCB, but this is really what we uh, care about is the uh, front end down here. So I actually take a closer up look at this. Now, as you can see, they're all identical. Um, all of these, there's, I don't think there's a single difference uh, between them and they require substantial heat sinking. So this is the new Rigol developed uh, custom front end, but I believe this is the new Centaur 
chipset. It's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. But that's the RT8847 or Ford 471. Uh, something like that. So, um, yeah, a few hairy scaries on there. Um, so we've got two of those. So one of those obviously uh, shares the two channels, and I believe that's the case. You uh, you know turn on channel one and channel two, and it halves the sample rate because you've got your single ADC here like this. But if you turn on channel one and channel um, three like that or channel four, for example, you'll get the full sample rate on two channels. Most uh, scopes work like that. And this in here, which is also uh, heat sunk, this is actually, you can tell by the uh, component arrangement down here that this is the uh, PLL. This is the clock generator PLL uh, for this thing. And that is a uh, TI jobby. It's an LMK0482 ultra low noise clock jitter cleaner, control jitter cleaner um, with dual loop uh, PLL. So it's got Roomba function. Um, and yeah, it's just, there you go, uh, Femto Zeppelin for all you, uh, you know, clock aficionados, you can go for your life in that. Anyway, this does have a external 10 meg oscillator in. I don't know if it's this one down here. It's one of these. Um, anyway, yeah, all this miscellaneous circuitry around here. This is for like internal. Uh, it's got 10 megahertz reference out, 10 megahertz external reference in as well. I'm not actually seeing the oscillator there though. So I don't know what's doing there. And are these two LEDs? Are these two? I don't know. I haven't powered it up without the back on it, but... Uh, they look like there's there's two LEDs there. I mean, we can zoom in on that. That 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 looks pretty leady, doesn't it? So this here is the uh, Rigol 5000 front end like this. And uh, as you can see, there's the BNC input. Uh, then we've got our AC uh, coupling uh, switching uh, relay here. We've just got one uh, AC key, whatever that is, I don't know. It could even be a discrete off the shelf uh, chipset. And then all of your uh, divider stuff around here. And then a, just a differential pair output buggering off there. But the new one is actually substantially different. Let's have a look at the front end. Now, I've actually uh, ta uh, taken the bottom. So this is the bottom uh, side of the, well, the front. <laughs> the bottom side of the actual uh, PCB as such, but it's the BNC, it's the business uh, side of it. And this is uh, the top here. But this uh, 5000 series Rigol front end here, um, this is like a lower end scope and you get it for like sub $1,000 now. So it's more fair to compare this one with the upcoming HCO uh, 1000, which I'm getting in another week or two, um, and we'll take a look at that. So I, I expect a simplistic front end like this. So it's fairer to compare it with the Rigol 7000 uh, series, which I've done a tear down of that as well. And here we go. It's not rotated, unfortunately. Can I rotate? So this is the 7000. You can see that we've got two relays here, uh, which we didn't have on the 5000, and we've got the um, AC uh, coupling uh, relay here. That's the um, little Cosmo uh, uh, solar state jobby there and uh, it looks like I think I don't know if I um, saw this in the previous one but uh, it looks like this actually has a separate 50 ohm path like this and a separate one meg ohm path um, I might have missed that in the previous teardown but have a look but if we compare that with the new HDO 4000 here it is it's um relatively Similar. We've got our two relays here. You'll note that they are exactly the same. And it's interesting to note that a Chinese oscilloscope actually uses Japanese Fujitsu uh, relays because the best relays are made in Japan. All the best stuffs are made in Japan. They're actually a Fujitsu uh, jobby. There you go. Ultra miniature uh, relay. Um, they're not shielded or anything like that, but they do actually specify, uh, you know, high frequency characteristic here. So yeah, superior contact spring for high frequency characteristic. So uh, it complies with various standards, but they're not shielded uh, relays. They're not like high frequency coaxial relays or anything fancy like that. So this is a, remember, this is an 800 megahertz front end. <laughs> When I was a boy, 800 meg front ends, um, they didn't look like this. Yeah, um, it's just absolutely incredible. Anyway, we've got the new Rigol ASIC here. This is the RT1642 um, IQ. So I, there's no info on that at all. If somebody can get info on that, I doubt Ry Ry Rigol are going to give us anything. I don't know. I should ask. Maybe, maybe they will. You know, they might give us a block diagram. They wouldn't give us more than the block diagram or anything. But this is Rigol's secret uh, weapon here. And uh, this is, of course, this is not a 12-bit front end, but it would have the dynamic range and low noise capability because this is a low noise 12-bit 
well, 12 bits is the converter, which is further up. It's not in the front end, but the front end has to have the low noise uh, dynamic range for the, um, you know, to enable uh, the 12 bit functionality. But anyway, the, uh, so, so the relays are the same. So it seems like this does have a separate 50 ohm path and a separate one meg ohm path as uh, people were speculating on the EV blog forum. You can see tiny little piddly traces there. They're really thin, thin as. Anyway, if it goes through the relay like this, if you're uh, AC or DC cup, it doesn't matter it goes through the relay and then it comes through like this and this is your ac path like that going into your dividery amplifier differential driver uh front end chip but the 50 ohm path actually is here and i have actually measured this this point here is actually physically connected through to if we draw this the relay has three <laughs> please forgive my mouse, but it has three contacts like this, and this is the center pin, and then it flips between there or down here. Yeah, so that point is actually, it, it's not actually connected over to here, it's actually physically connected through to just the just the actual input uh, pin here like this. So I've measured that. But the 50 ohm, it looks like this flips it on. It goes through here. I have measured that resistor there, even though it doesn't say it on the top. That is a 50 ohm uh, resistor. And then it goes through here. Once again, contact over to here. And this is your 50 ohm path. Here's another 50 ohm resistor here. And it goes up into there. So separate 50 ohm and one meg ohm paths. Interesting. And once again, we've got all of our uh, divider stuff like this. But this is Rigol's new secret weapon, which is their low noise uh, front end. Um, and as you saw in my uh, previous video, this is not a 100 microvolt per division front end. It's only a one millivolt per division front end. Uh, 100, 200, and 500 microvolts are software magnified. But you can do that because you've got 12-bit converter. And anyway, uh, people over on the EV blog forum, I'll put the link down below, they have actually measured uh, the noise and compared it with the Siglet and uh, a LaCroix, I think, um, something like that. And yeah, the Rigol does a pretty decent job. The front end is pretty decently no low noise, um, especially for the uh, cost. So yeah, it's it's really good. But this is an entire front end. I mean, you know, there's nothing doing over here. There's a whole bunch of bypassing and stuff. Uh, lo looks like we have a filter there because you can tell it's got the extra eh, extra contacts in the middle up eh, extra contacts in the middle there you can see those but apart from that like there's nothing else doing here um sorry i do have to my head's in the way so let me move my head um floating dave head there we go but what i didn't show you down here this this image is flipped just to make it um the same way around but this is a 4053 the classic 4053 jelly bean 4000 series cmos um analog switch it's still used in everything this is a uh, 272 there was another one if you spotted up closely up on the main board there's probably a whole bunch of these the uh 272 is just a here it is um it's just a precision um dual op amp it's nothing you know super special so this would be doing the uh, bias function, which this has, which is actually different to the offset. This actually, I, I got that wrong in the previous video. I just assumed that the bias in the front end settings was the offset, but it's not. The actual physical offset where you move the waveform up and down, that's different to the DC bias. You can actually add a DC bias to the front end. And I think, I suspect that that's what that's uh, doing there. Yeah, but there's nothing else um, here doing at all. So. It's, that's an 800 meg front end. There's not much cost in it. I don't know what this ASICs uh, cost them, what sort of process they did that on. I don't know if you know what uh, sort of, you know, process they would have uh, used for that thing. Obviously, it's pretty high power because, like, it needs a pretty decent heatsink, as you saw. Now, as for getting the uh, signal out, you can see that there's actually two... There's a different way. <laughs> There's um, actually two differential pairs coming out of here. So these two here and these two here. So there's two differential pairs coming out. So I don't know what the deal is. And I can't see those on the bottom of the board. So I think they're actually going through that. This is what this via stitch in here is for, I suspect. Um, so yeah, that's obviously, I don't know, it's buggering off to the ADC. What is clearly Rigol's uh, four gig sample per second ADC. So this is their center chipset here um, that they, you know, claim. And the, you know, the Ultra Vision 3 technology or whatever, that's just being run in the RTX 7 FPGA. So this is the bottom of the board here. As you can see, like there's not much doing. You can see all the matched length traces. We've got the wiggle, wiggle, wiggle years in here. Check those out. So what's going on here is when you see both P 
pairs like that take a snake, it means that they're matching the entire length of this pair with all the other pairs, their length matching. But when you see a wiggle, 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 yeah, in just one of the traces like that, and down here as well, what they're doing there is matching one the one side of the differential pair with the other side of the differential pair they're just matching between the two so there's two different types of length matchings and you can mix and match those two they want to ensure that the obviously this is coming out of the adc they want to ensure that data coming from the adc is exactly the same matched uh timing going from both channels over to the fpga here but yeah there's really nothing else on there it's not very exciting, is it? So we want to look at the processor now. Here it is. It's a Rockchip RK3399. Hadn't heard of this before. Turns out it's actually um quite old. I've got a data sheet of 2018 here. Um, and it's an ARM processor. It's running the uh, Android operating system. I think I showed that in the uh, previous video. So yeah, it's got Cortex-A72, uh, quad-core, um, Cortex-A53 with separate Neon uh, coprocessor. Uh, yeah, it's got um, H264, 265 decoders, 10-bit jobbies, um, 1080p, 30 frames per second, JPEG encoder, decoder, uh, pre-image processors and stuff like that, embedded 3D GPU, well, we don't need that, but yeah, there you go, for those playing along at home, um, it's got cryptography extensions and stuff, but yeah, I don't know, it's just, uh, they presumably chose it, I don't know, because it's cheap, or they have experience with the ecosystem, or whatever, um, you could choose any ARM-based <laughs> processor here, but this one's, you know, it's, it's at least four years old, it's not something new, and mysteriously, there are two buttons up here, I wonder what they do, they're not marked, huh. and they're populated, so... <laughs> That's interesting, but as I mentioned before, this is the power supply up here by the looks of it, or at least part of that, um, for the connector that goes off to the active probes on the uh, front end. That's like mostly um, power there. They had all those wires going over. Don't know why. Um, just separate uh, fused ones. I don't know. And I don't know if this had uh, HDMI output direct. Did it? Did it? Yes. Display interface. One HDMI port. There you go. So I'm not sure what that one's doing. Let's look it up. Yeah, I'm not finding any ready info on that. So like you can see that some of the pairs go direct from the rock chip over the HDMI driver on there, but others um, come from the 4C. So I don't know what's doing there. Anyway, um, here's our touch uh, sensor for the uh, touch screen. And this is our um, uh, LCD ribbon cable. You can see those going on physically over onto the LCD over there. And basically that's coming directly from the rock chip over here. Now, I don't know how much memory is associated with that. You could decode the uh, micron part number over there as you can do for the uh, FPGA um, as well. For the micron memory, we've got a uh, real-time battery uh, backup. Yeah, so apart from like your auxiliary ins and outs here, um, there's nothing doing. There is a third unpopulated uh, USB over here, so I don't know. But yeah, obviously like, like this board doesn't even have the options for the what, of what you saw with the connector cutouts on the uh, front panel. There's no option for mixed signal, uh, waveform gen or anything like that. So nothing doing there um, at all, really. Uh, and one of these inputs over here was external trigger. Was that external trigger at the top? Anyway, we have a very nice populated uh, JTAG over there for us. That's excellent. Uh, if you want to hack this thing, is there any like serial? Oh yeah, there you go. That could be a UART interface. Jeez, the, the real mouse operation's really laggy on my 4K so when I'm capturing my 4K screen. Doesn't do this on the 1080. But anyway, this is the power input. It's just, uh, I think it's just 12 volts in um, for the whole thing, really. And um, and then you've got, you know, yeah, look, there's obviously like there's 0.9 volts here, is it? Yeah, there's 0.9 volts here. There's, you know, a separate voltage for the CPU. There's 3.3 volts there. There's another uh, CPU jobby over here. VDD center here, I assume that's the supply for um, the high speed uh, split. Um, Transmission line termination. So that'd be what that's for. There's another analog VGC management analog uh, v VCC. There's one volt over here. There's 2.5 volts over here. There's 1.8 volts here. There's another 1.8 volt generator here. There's like, uh, like, it's crazy. In fact, what we don't see here 
inside the front end, we don't actually see a low noise supply. So uh, this looks switching like what's going on here. Not seeing any major inductories. So of course you wouldn't have a switching supply powering your ultra low noise front end here. Um, you're just not going to do that. But I'm uh, maybe five, 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 five point two. Would they be uh, low noise? They they might be powering the front end, perhaps. But I would have expected to see one for each, and I didn't see it on the bottom. There is a three pin jobby there, but I don't think that's doing it. So yeah, they must be supplying them outside. So that's that's surprising. Didn't expect that. There you go. That's it for the um, teardown. The Rigol HDO. 4000 so uh, yeah this is a it's a serious bit of kit as i said like the performance of the front end seems pretty good like it's not industry leading or anything but for the price point um it's pretty good now for the hdo 1000 series upcoming uh should be that should be on the uh on the plane in another week or two um so we'll be able to tear down that but as i said i wouldn't expect uh the dual relay front end because it's lower bandwidth it's not 800 meg but i suspect it might you because it is a 12-bit once again it's 12-bit so it's going to be using the new centaur chipset and i suspect it will use the front end 800 megahertz capable obviously who knows it might even go higher than that we don't know um but uh, yeah i expect it to use the exact same chip but as you uh, saw in uh, the Rigol 5000 I expect it to eliminate because it won't have 50 ohm right so it won't it won't need the relays it'll probably just eliminate both of those and it'll just have the uh, ACDC input akadaka and um, yeah Bob's your uncle but where is the power supply for each each of the front ends I'd like ultra low noise I would have expected like this bad these bad boys to have a, a low noise um linear reg on each one of them i don't know maybe it's built in anyway it'll be interesting to compare this with the uh, hdo 1000 a much cheaper one which starts at 6.99 this one starts at 26.99 i think it is um so it's significantly uh more expensive um yeah i don't know if they've like cheaped out on the uh, processor over here the RTX 7 you know you'll find that in any you know top end oscilloscope uh, these days something like that so I don't think they've necessarily like they haven't really skimped there I guess um, and they've developed their own custom um, front end and new Centaur chipset here or is Centaur like both of these combined or something that might be you know that might be the thing but yeah it's like it's amazing how simple the front ends eight 800 meg front end come on and it seems to be a pretty decent front end low noise <laughs> 12 bit capable front end one millivolt per division um yeah really quite amazing stuff and this will have our software bandwidth limiters in there as well i suspect um so yeah there's probably like an i squared c bus that comes into it or something that actually commands sends the commands uh to it because there's no separate uh pga programmable gain amplifier it's all in here there's no se separate differential uh driver so it's got a programmable gain amplifier you know with with the attenuator uh system and stuff and it's got the differential uh driver output it's probably got adjustable bandwidth limiters in there 20 meg 200 meg 400 and 800 uh meg um because i i think they'd be implementing those in the front end and not actually like digitally inside the fpga but uh yeah anyway you can tell that from the um shape i mean uh, everyone over on the ev blog forums analyzing the uh shape of the noise curve and everything um and you can actually tell a lot from the shape of the noise curve it's rather interesting anyway that's really cool so if you like that please give it a big a thumbs up and as always you can discuss down below i'll link the ev blog forum down below where people are discussing this bad boy and uh comparing the noise and analyzing doing performance analysis and all sorts of stuff so if you're interested in getting one of these um and you're you know curious to know how good like the 12-bit performance and front end is there's people over there doing tests and comparisons and stuff really neat and i'm impressed by the construction of this thing too it's you know it's really good and and rigol seem to have engineered this pretty well so i'm quite happy with it and thanks to all the patrons who help uh, pay for the stuff that I do here. Um, this is my full-time job and they help pay for it. So I, that's always linked in down below and is very much appreciated, as is the EV Blog store. If you want to uh, support, you can uh, buy like a multimeter on the EV Blog store. Clamp meter coming soon, by the way.
So I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. Give it a big thumbs up, comment, because that adds to the metrics and it, you know, it really helps beat the algorithm. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.